Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. So for the past few days, we have been driving to Duns River Falls. So today, we are going to end the journey at the parking lot of Duns River Falls. We are in the parish of St. Anne. Sit back, relax and drive with me. First up, now we have gotten this whatsapp message from a subscriber it says good afternoon on friday may 21 2021 about 1 pm i was in fontana pharmacy in savannah lamar and found an envelope with money and a health card bearing the name errol cunningham i gave same to the pharmacy technician I want to make sure that the person gets his card and money. Could you please mention this in your next video? Thanks. Mr. Errol Cunningham or anybody knowing Mr. Errol Cunningham, you were in the Fontana Pharmacy on Friday, May 21. You lost an envelope with money and your health card. You need to go back to Fontana Pharmacy, speak with the persons in the pharmacy section, identify yourself to them, and claim your envelope with your health card and your money. Also, thanks to the person who sent us this message. Mr. Cunningham, we have the number for the person. So if it is that you are having any difficulty, WhatsApp us at 876-458-91. 1 1 and we will make the connection so today two persons are gonna win two digital credits stick around for the questions now today we have a few stories for you i have been reading most if not all of the comments on our stories and we see the frustration we see the outrage we see all of that what persons need to understand the stories that we are bringing to you these types of atrocities it's not today nor yesterday they have been happening in jamaica what is happening now is that you are hearing about them because the stories that we carry on this channel most times you're not gonna hear them anywhere else the details that we bring to you as to how some of the atrocities take place you're not gonna hear them anywhere else so people saying jamaica gone jamaica this jamaica that it's not no these types of atrocities has been taking place another thing i'm seeing where some persons are saying only god can save jamaica and only god can help us we believe in god so don't get me wrong we believe that god give us a brain if we are gonna sit down and wait on god whosoever we perceive him to be if we are gonna sit down and wait on god to live wherever we think he is to come down and solve our problems that will never happen that is why he gave us a brain there's a saying god help those who help themselves if we don't help ourselves we are not going to be helped no matter what amount of prayer we want to pray no matter what amount of fasting we want to fast if we don't decide to do something about what is happening things will never change we best believe that pray all you want to pray prayer is good yes but we can't end it at praying we can't pray and we get up and we fasting and we know say the boy down the road people are going to check him all the time and buy guns and bullets from him i rent guns and bullets from him and because we sit down and i pray we feel say God going to take care of that. When we know what is happening, and we know going our little corner in our house, 
and pick up a phone and dial 911 or 311 or 119 and say, Officer, there's something taking place down the road. Now, if we don't do that, what we think? God is going to do it? It's time we start doing what is right, doing what we need to do to protect ourselves and our community. We can't be turning a blind eye to what is happening. And then we say, yes, Jamaica gone, Jamaica this, Jamaica that. We are the people of Jamaica. If we don't do something about what is happening, it now go change. I hope I didn't bore you too much. It's now six minutes into the video. So let's get right into the stories. So today, we have a few stories for you. I implore of you, stick around for the last story. We are going to tell you about a security officer in Montego Bay who was taken out. But first up, this first incident, it took place at Santai in the Green Island Police Area in the parish of Hanover. It took place on Friday, the 21st of May, 2021, about 12.30 p.m. Our information is that the Hanover police, they carried out an operation at the home of a man. This man, he's popularly called Geza and D-Max. He's well known in the Santa area. Our information is that the home of Geza was searched by the police. During the search, one Glock 17 9mm pistol affixed with a magazine containing nine rounds of nine millimeter cartridges were recovered we are also learning that four cellular phones which is suspected to be used in the illegal lottery scam as also 25 lead sheets these sheets contained identity information of persons living overseas as also other documents which is suspected to be used in the illegal lottery scam were also seized. Geza is 31 years old. He and two other persons were taken into custody. Our information is that the Hanover police are carrying out intensive investigation and we are expecting that Geza will be charged for the gun and ammunition as well as his alleged involvement in the lottery scam now this next incident that we are gonna tell you about very very sad it has not been reported before we checked around we checked the newspapers we checked the radio stations we haven't seen or heard anything of it it took place on mother's day sunday the 9th of may 2021 this one took place shortly after 2 p.m it happened along the Norman Manley Boulevard. The section of Norman Manley Boulevard that it occurred on is in the Hanover section. Now, our information is that a man, his name, Mr. Kyle Samuels, 28 years old, he was a manager for an establishment and he lived at Pembroke Hall in Kingston. Now, Mr. Samuels, he was driving a 2019 Suzuki Desire motor car. He was accompanied by a lady. Her name is Miss Abigail. I won't even attempt to pronounce the surname, but it's spelt N-G-Y-O-N. She was 27 years old. She was in the motor car with Kyle. Abigail and Kyle, they were heading out of Negril heading towards Green Island direction. Another motor car, a Nissan Latio motor car, was being driven by a lady. Her name is Mrs. Joyce Ann Malcolm. She was 41 years old and she lived at Cousins Cove in the parish of Hanover. Now, both motor vehicles were traveling in opposite direction. Upon reaching a section of the roadway, Kyle, Mr. Samuels, he lost control of the Suzuki Desire that he was driving. The vehicle spun around 
in the road into the path of the car that Mrs. Malcolm was driving. As a result, there was a collision. The three occupants of the two cars, they were seriously injured in this accident. They were rushed to the Noel Holmes Hospital where Abigail, she was pronounced D-E-A-D, -E on arrival at the hospital. Mrs. Malcolm, she was later transferred to the Cornwall Regional Hospital, but she died on Wednesday, the 12th of May, 2021, sometime in the night. She died as a result of head injuries she had received in this accident. The driver for the other car, the car that Abigail was in, he had received injuries to his head and his shoulder. Kyle, he died at the Falmouth Hospital where he was transferred on Wednesday, the 19th of May, 2021, sometime in the day. So all three persons who were involved in this accident have passed away. Kyle and Abigail, like we said, they were in one vehicle and Mrs. Malcolm, she was in another vehicle. May their souls rest in peace. Condolences to the family of Mrs. Malcolm, Mr. Samuels, and Abigail. Now, in the final story for today, but before we go into the final story, we have two quick questions for you. In the first question, in the last story that we uploaded, what is the name and the alias of the man who was taken out at Mailersfield Mountain in Westmoreland? And the second question is, earlier this week, we brought you a story of a six-year-old boy. What was his name? The first person with the correct answer, you'll be winning for yourself a Digicel credit. And remember, one winner per video. So you can't, if you even answer two times, you'll be awarded one prize. If it is that you were the first person to answer. And we are looking for correct spellings. So in the final story for today, now this one is a very sad story. We have been getting some information. And hopefully, the police will hear this and process it and see what they can make of it. Now this one, it happened on Thursday, the 20th of May, 2021, about 7.15 a.m. It happened at a place named Crawford Street in Mount Salem, Montego Bay, in the parish of St. James. Our information is that a young man, his name is Sadane Legister. He was 27 years old. He was a security officer and he lived at Crawford Street. Our information is that Sadane, he got up. Now there's a skip near to his house where persons take their garbage and empty it in that skip. So Sadane, he got up took out some garbage out of his house, went to the skip to empty the garbage. The skip is on the roadway. When he was pounced upon by two men who shot him in his head and his upper body. The police were called in and Sadin, he was taken to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E Our information is that Sadin he was shot seven times. Now, most times we hear about some persons being taken out. The first thing come to our mind is a wimdo. What was he involved in? Him a scammer. Him a criminal. All kind of things come to our minds. And we have to admit it. Sadin, our information is that he started working with Hawkeye Security Company. A few months ago, Sadin, we are told that his background was checked before he was employed at Hawkeye. In fact, our information is that the police, they also verified 
that Sardane was clean. There was nothing in his background to say he was involved in anything. As a result, he was employed by Hawkeye. Now, we are told that a few weeks ago, Sardane complained to his superiors that a lady who he was living with for a short while, the lady got pregnant. Sardane was adamant that he was not the father of that unborn child. He also told persons that the lady admitted to him that no, he was not the father. As a result, he instructed her to leave his house. The lady left the house. Shortly after she left, Sadien started getting threatening phone calls from men or men identifying themselves as gangsters. Sadien, it is said, he made a report to his superiors. His superiors tell him that this is bigger than them. He need to make a report to the police. It is said that Sadien he went to the police station. I'm not sure which police station, but he went to the police station, made a report about the threats and all that was happening around him. And we are told that the police called back at least one of the numbers that was calling him and warned the person that if anything happened to Sadin, they will be seen as a likely suspect. It is shortly after this phone call that Sadin was attacked and take note. If all of this is true, officers, if you are searching for motive, there is a likely motive right under your nose. You need to act on that information. If the telephone number of the person who was calling is still known, if it is that the police had called back this person, there must be some lag somewhere of that telephone number. Officers, please act on the information that I have just given to you. I don't know if maybe you have other motives or any other likely motives, but this is a likely motive. This young man, we are told that he was a honest, hard-working young man, not involved in anything, and to see hoodlums just pounced on him, take him out like that, the culprits, the hoodlums, they need to be brought in to face justice. This incident happened. 7.15 in the morning Somebody must have seen what happened We know that persons are reluctant to go forward and give information or give statement or go to court But officers, please act on this Don't let the passing of this young man just go like that Somebody need to be brought to justice The mayhem continues Blessed love everybody